Hello, movie lovers. Today I want to continue on with my uh, discussions of the films in American Lost and Found, the BBS story. It was a production company, part of Columbia uh, Studios. Uh, seven movies in this set that Criterion uh, released a few years ago. Today I want to discuss The Last Picture Show, probably the most critically acclaimed movie in this set. Uh, also was a big hit. Um, with a fantastic cast directed by Peter Bogdanovich from a novel by Larry McMurtry. McMurtry and Bogdanovich uh, collaborated on the screenplay. And it's set in a uh, very dusty, small Texas town, 1951. There's nothing much going on in this town. There's a pool hall, there's a movie theater, there's a cafe. That's about it. <laughs> and uh, the, the storyline uh, centers on uh, various romantic entanglements. And this is sort of a patent place in, in, in Texas. Uh, and a lot of this uh, involves uh, a, a, character, a high school senior uh, named J.C. This is played by Sybil Shepard in her uh, film debut. And, uh, and she is the beauty of the town. She is Everybody's in love with her, including Sonny and Dwayne, two of her classmates. Dwayne, played by Jeff Bridges, is the official boyfriend, but J.C. has her eyes looked in other directions as well. And uh, his best friend, Sonny, played by Timothy Bottoms, also in love with J.C., but uh, he, you know, the, the, his best friend is the boyfriend, so that is submerged. Uh, and both of these boys, high school seniors, they don't live at home. We don't really learn why that is. They're living in a boarding house. Uh, they obviously don't, don't get along with their parents. Uh, and But they have a foster father, Sam the Lion. He owns all three of these establishments in town. And, and he sort of uh, takes them under his wing, especially Sonny. And Sam is played by, um, by Ben Johnson of John Ford fame, many John Ford movies. Uh, he gets his chance, and he wins the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, uh, and a well-deserved one. And we also get uh, uh, J.C.'s mom, and, and J.C.'s mom, I think, may be my favorite performance in this, in this movie played by Ellen Burstein. Uh, she, she understands J.C.'s spoiled nature and that Ben really can't depend on her. Uh, she she uh, she discourages her relationship, J.C.'s relationship with Dwayne. That don't even think of marrying him. That'll never work. Um, so she's sort of like this knowing. Uh, she understands what's going on. She understands human nature, much like Sam the lion does. And there was, is there a connection between those two? Uh, and then we get Cloris Leachman playing the uh, basketball coaches, the high school basketball coach's wife. She is very unhappily married, very frustrated in her, uh, in her life and some implied her sex life. And she too has a Peyton Place type uh, romantic entanglement with one of the boys. Um, so, and Cloris Leachman wins the Academy Award Best Supporting Actress. So, and there's terrific performances. There is no doubt that Bogdanovich has a talent with actors. And even though he's so closely associated with Howard Hawks and John Ford and Orson Welles, they're directing the auteur directing directors of classic Hollywood cinema. He, he started out as an actor. Uh, he, worked, he worked with, studied with uh, Stella Adler um, in the actor studio. He started out very young, I think he was 22 years old when he directed his first off-Broadway play. So he knows, he, 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 he really gives his, uh, his actors their moment and we get, and, and when their moment comes, we know it because he'll slowly track in to, uh, to a close-up of the actor giving the monologue that, you know, for Leachman and Ben Johnson wins the Academy Award. He actually told him on the set, that, that scene's gonna win you the Academy Award, and of course they did win. Um, but the town is so forlorn looking, and it kind of matches the characters, because everybody is basically at one, on one level or another uh, <laughs> forlorn, not happy. Uh, and, and when you look at it, at the town, the way it's photographed, and it's, the black and white cinematography by Robert Surtees is really magnificent. But when you look at the town, you wonder, why would anybody want to live there? You know, let's get out. If I was a young person, I'd, I'd got to get out of this town. Ironically enough, Larry McMurtry, 
lived in this town, and they actually decided to film the town uh, that his, Larry McMurtry's hometown, I think it's Archer City, Texas, they call it something different in the movie. And McMurtry does get out of town and to go to college, and, uh, but then he spends most of his adult life back in Archer City. It must be something, something uh, uh, very valuable in roots. Uh, and, but he, he, and he's famous for his bookstore. He, he opened a, a bookstore in Archer City and eventually expanded it to like four different buildings. I always wanted to go and visit that bookstore, but I never did get a chance. Um, so all the, uh, and, and he based many of these stories because in, uh, there's some terrific supplements with this, and he based the stories on uh, actual events, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Peyton Place type uh, aspect of the storyline. Uh, some of it, the townspeople said, probably was true, some of it probably rumors, uh, but they were aware of all these stories that are being told and who those characters might have been in real life. Um, so, uh, and then the, the, uh, the tension between the characters in the movie mirrored what was going on behind the scenes. <laughs> so, uh, Timothy Bottoms uh, had an unrequited love for J.C., but he also had an unrequited love for Sybil Shepherd, uh, as did Jeff Bridges. And, but she, she um, Sybil Shepherd pairs off a little over halfway through the filming of the movie, she pairs off with uh, Peter Bogdanovich. And that had added the problems because Peter Bogdanovich's wife uh, was worked in the, in, on the crew. She, uh, she was, I think, the set designer, the costumer. She, she, she was heavily involved in the movie. And she had a great career going forward as a set designer. Uh, and we see an interview with her from about 20 years later where she says that, you know, she knew about it, everybody knew what was going on, but she believed in the movie, she wanted to be successful, she didn't want to portray herself as a victim, so she soldiered on, but she said it was kind of tough because I had to do Sybil Shepherd's hair every day. <laughs> then uh, Cloris Leachman and uh, Ellen Burstein were both going through very difficult divorces, so uh, they were commiserating with each other every day, crying. So it, it, the, the nature of what was going on off screen certainly contributed something to the authenticity of the performances, for sure. Um, my, uh, I saw the film in 1971, and uh, my reaction to it was, uh, not overwhelming. I thought it was a really good movie, very, very, very well acted movie. But when I checked my own personal archives when I was doing ten best lists, um, Last Picture Show was not on it. Um, and uh, uh, the um, and I'm not really sure why it was because it's such a good movie, and it, I think it, it. But it's not a movie that's much talked about. Bogdanovich's subsequent career <laughs> was. Uh, was so um, uh, it just he he had he had three um, successes in a row. He had Last Picture Show seventy one, seventy two was uh, What's Up Doc, seventy three I think, or seventy four was Paper Moon, big critical commercial successes, and that was it. <laughs> and I think he he and there was like forty years to go yet in his career. He made twelve more movies. Feature films, I think Mask was the only one that was a commercial success, and most of them were flops. Um, and uh, he um, he he relied, and, and he, but even with um, with the last picture show, you get a sense of really why is he making this film? You know, I think that. You know, because he even says himself that he was he struggled with it. He said, "Because I'm a New York City guy, what do I know? What, what would I know about Texas? I don't know anything about Texas and these characters and all." But he he saw potential in there, and especially the potential where he could reference and quote cinematically quote his heroes: Orson Welles, Howard Hawks, John Ford. In the commentaries, he's constantly mentioning, you know. Uh, uh, Orson Welles told me this. John Ford says you should shoot a scene like this. Howard Hawks told him, you know, get this kind of performance. Uh, uh, how to how to get good performances. Um, but um, he uh, 
uh, he he uh, like I say he 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 that's the part of the film that really works the performances uh, after after his three big successes he joined some another producing company uh, three directors he himself William Freak and I can't remember who the other director was and. And they were they had the uh, intent of making good quality films that but that would have commercial appeal and what Bogdanovich did is he made Daisy Miller which had no commercial appeal would never have a commercial appeal and uh, he insisted on making it and it was seen as a vehicle for his girlfriend for for Sybil Shepherd you, you don't you almost get a sense that he was sabotaging his own career and then he had big flops with the long last love uh, um, and uh, a few others that that you know I don't know you 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 would wonder what was he thinking that this these, these would be hit movies uh, he 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 battled with producers and uh, he battled with the last picture show uh, this the uh, it's got about twelve more minutes this the the uh, the print we're seeing uh, in the nineteen nineties he put about I think twelve more mo minutes back into the movie that the producer wanted him to take out and. Uh, when you see the clips of those, uh, you know, they were crucial scenes. Um, as far as Daisy Miller goes and Sybil Shepherd, the, <clears throat> and, and she got lambasted with, for her performance in Daisy Miller, and, uh, and I don't think she ever really recovered from that, or, or uh, the movies, the movie never really recovered from that lambasting, and, and Bogdanovich perhaps as well. Um, I've seen the movie several times through the years, and whereas the last picture show I've, I've seen maybe once since it first came out, it's not a movie I'm drawing back to see, uh, even though I think it's a really good movie. Daisy Miller is, is there's something fun about this. There's some, even something uh, that's uh, kind of interesting the way Bogdanovich uh, uh, uses Sybil Shepherd in this film as Daisy Miller. And the first couple of times I saw I didn't like it, but Sybil Shepherd had, you know, a good career on television, her series with Bruce Willis, and she, I think she had another uh, comedy series. And now when you look back, when I look back on it, at least I sort of enjoy her performance. It's a strange movie. <laughs> uh, but um, and, and that, that, that indicates that maybe there's things in, in uh, Bogdanovich's career. I'm, I did not watch all of Bogdanovich's later films. I think uh, I saw At Long Last Love, St. Jack, I think, which were, came out in a couple of years, um, 79, 80, some, somewhere around there. Actually, I don't, I don't believe I saw any of his films. I, I probably did. I just, I just forgot. But it is an interesting career that you could you could be on top of the world and then you just you fall off it and you never get back up you never really had he had a mask i think was a commercial hit that was the only one of the 12 films features that he made after paper moon so he is a subject for further research i think but even even if that you know last picture show is certainly a film that any director would be proud to hinge his reputation on Okay, thanks a lot uh, for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Take care.